Hey everyone, today's video is a bit different because it's not an art video. Today I'm going to review a TV. This is the Prism Plus Q55 Android TV. So Prism Plus, a company based here in Singapore, contacted me again to ask if I wanted to check out some of their new TVs, the Q series TVs that they have released in October 2020. And I said yes because the last TV that I actually used for an extended period of time was actually in the year 2000 when I was still playing Final Fantasy. So I wanted to see how it feels like to use a TV again. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, this TV is like significantly better compared to the 720p TV that I use. This has 4K resolution. It's 55 inches as HDR10 with Dolby Vision and Dolby Audio and it has Android TV installed so you can do a lot of things. Anyway, this video is going to be a bit long so if you want to save time, you can actually check out the text review that I have already written. The link is in the video description below. This review is made possible thanks to Prism Plus for sponsoring this review unit. Now for my review, I'm just going to present to you my findings and you can decide whether or not this is worth the money. And speaking of money, the Prism Plus Q55, it's priced at $699, the 65 inch, it's $999 and the Q75, $1,599. Shipping and installation is included as well as a three-year on-site warranty. Now Prism Plus is actually a company that sells a lot of computer monitors for gaming as well as for productivity. I have some of those monitors reviewed on my YouTube channel as well as on my blog before. So Prism Plus happens to be the first Singapore brand to produce smart TVs that are powered by the Google Android TV system. All right, uh, let me just start this review at the beginning and show you the things included. So we have a remote, batteries for the remote, four screws for screwing the two feet onto the TV. I'm not sure what is this, it's not labeled in the manual. Power cable, digital TV antenna. And now let's take a look at the ports on the monitor before we set it up. The holes at the bottom are for the downward firing speakers. That, by the way, is the power button for the monitor. So the ports are located here. That's AV in. This is for the antenna. Two USB ports, three HDMI ports, digital audio. This is for the LAN cable or Ethernet. The four holes here are for wall mounting. Prism Plus do provide basic installation and assembly, but for fixed or swivel wall mounting, that's going to cost extra. Fixing the two feet onto the TV is straightforward. Just take note that you will need your own screwdriver because there is a none included. This 55 inch TV is massive. It takes up the whole of my computer table, which is 1.5 meters, by the way. I actually have this TV set up here temporarily because my living room is in a mess. So let me just remove the green uh, sticky stuff. Triple A batteries. Not sure if you guys can see, but there's actually a red light here. Okay, let's power this on. So I'm just going through the basic setup. This TV is powered by Android TV. So you would set it up just like how you would set up an Android phone, I suppose. Okay, I'm in. Android TV, in case you don't know, is actually a computer. It's the user interface for the TV. It's just like handphones that run Android. They have user interface for handphones. This is the user interface for TVs. And with Android, um, you get to install apps, games. In this case, since this is a TV, you can also connect it to HDMI, your PlayStation, computer, basically anything that outputs HDMI. So let me go into the settings to show you guys uh, some stuff. I guess the most important thing to know is you can connect Bluetooth devices. So I have connected my mouse to the TV. You can also connect a keyboard and a remote control in case you want to play games. 
This TV is running Android 9 and I've got to say that the user interface is pretty slick. Let's go into Google Play Store to have a look. So most of the apps here are optimized for TV. You can also install games. And since most of these apps are optimized for TVs, there will be certain apps that are available on your phone that are not going to be available here. So the default media apps installed are YouTube, um, there's this live TV, Amazon Prime Video, and Netflix. So if you want to watch Netflix, you will need a subscription. And I do not have a Netflix subscription. So now I'm in YouTube. Let's uh, watch some videos. So most of the YouTube videos that I have created were recorded in 4K. And this is one of the videos I made a few years ago in India. Now the visual quality is fantastic. I mean, straight out of the box, the colors look great. Due to the 4K resolution, everything looks very sharp, very detailed. So color is definitely fantastic. It is, it is really, really satisfying to watch shows, play games on this huge TV. Wow. Check out the details of the lines. Some of those details I don't even notice when I'm editing on my 1440p monitor. Let's take a look at the remote. Now this remote build quality seems quite solid. I like the texture here. It's a matte surface texture. So of course you will be able to switch channels. You can change the input source here. These are for navigation, shortcut buttons for the different video apps. There is probably a microphone somewhere on this remote that allows you to use the Google Assistant that you can use to launch apps or to search for things. This is way more convenient compared to using the navigation button to move around on the on-screen keyboard. So now I have the TV connected to Mac OS using the HDMI cable. Now the design of this TV, it looks good. It's a very clean and simple design. It sits quite low to the base because the feet are not that high. And currently I'm running at 4K resolution, so everything looks really sharp. The colors look great. And because this is an IPS panel, so the viewing angles for this TV, it's really good. It's a bit glossy, but the TV is actually bright enough for the colors to go through the reflections. And this design, um, it's a very simple, clean design. Bezels are quite minimal, about one centimeter on the top and on the sides. At the bottom, where the logo is, the bezel is about two centimeters. From afar, it's a very minimalist look. So when connected to the computer, I can play YouTube as well using the web browser and the image quality here is the same as you would see on the Android TV. Um, very sharp, very detailed. Let's uh, switch over to playing some movies. Let me play this movie that I bought on iTunes. This is Logan. This movie is in 4K and supports HDR, so we'll see how good the HDR effects are on this TV, which by the way has 280 nits of maximum brightness, so it's not going to be like mind-blowing HDR. So what I want to show you guys here is whether or not this TV has good HDR, and let me just pause here. So from what I can see, now I have tested like real HDR monitors before and with those high quality HDR monitors, I am able to see details here, um, like the webbing, the little highlights, but here it seems like everything is um, just black. So HDR here, it's not like true HDR, but overall, 
it's still quite enjoyable to watch this movie because the display, the TV is huge. Let me just uh, fast forward a bit. Okay, pause here. Now with again high quality HDR monitors, I'm able to see like highlights within this black area here, but here it's just uh, crushed into blacks. So this is very typical IPS panel type performance. And now let's take a look at IPS glow, backlight bleeding and viewing angles when the room is dark. So this is an IPS panel and it will have IPS glow. This is not surprising and IPS glow will be more or less obvious depending on where you view the monitor. So from the front, it's actually not that obvious. But from the side here, especially if you're watching movies with your family, some of your members are sitting on the side, then maybe they can see some glow. But the thing is, my camera can actually uh, capture more of the glow compared to what my eyes can see. What my eyes are looking at right now, um, this area, uh, you can see it's quite blue, bluish. My eyes are actually uh, seeing this sort of black, not that. So I'm not sure why my camera is picking that up. But um, this is what my eyes are looking at right now. That's the level of black that I see, not the bluish black. And the backlight bleeding, I would say it's quite even. As in, I have reviewed monitors where the backlight bleed will be like wavy. So here it's still quite even, as in it's not distracting. When you're watching movies in a dark environment, the colors and contrast look better. Now, when I'm looking at this TV from the side, as in I'm not in front of the TV right now, I can see a drop in contrast that affects the color slightly but um, overall it still looks good. This is very typical IPS panel type performance. I have reviewed several um, higher end IPS panels and those uh, panels will also have a drop in contrast when you're looking from the side because the IPS glow will somehow bleed through when you view the display from certain angles. Anyway, this is not OLED display. It's not marketed as having any OLED dynamic range or contrast. So this um, IPS performance, it's not surprising to me. It's actually uh, quite good, very satisfactory. Um, just that you won't be able to get like OLED type contrast. So blacks are not going to be totally black, but that's to be expected. We're not paying OLED prices anyway. Um, the last time I checked OLED displays at this price, it's at least $300 more expensive. To get the best viewing experience, it's still best to draw your curtains. But overall, the brightness, it seems alright if you want to watch shows in bright daylight. This TV has Chromecast built into it. Let me show you how it works. So right now I'm using my iPhone. You can use an Android phone. You can use iPads or Android tablets as well. And this app is YouTube. So for this to work, I just need to make sure that the phone and the TV are on the same Wi-Fi network, in which case the TV will show up on the YouTube app. And I just have to click to connect. So the connection, it's quite smooth. There is no startling. So the video is now playing quite smoothly. I can also use the phone to jump forward. So basically just use the phone to navigate this video. And you can also use the remote to control this as well. So yep, I can pause and play and I can fast forward. So Chromecast is quite convenient. If you want a quick way to connect your device to your TV so that you can watch some uh, shows that are on your phone or on your tablet. Whether wireless video casting is available will depend on the app that you use. So for example, with this movie that I'm playing on Amazon Prime, oh, okay, I can cast this 
onto the TV as well. Okay, let's talk about gaming. I do not game, so I cannot say much about gaming except to say that this monitor has a refresh rate of 60 Hz. So if you do console gaming, definitely there is no problem with this TV. By the way, this is not me playing. Both hands are here. Um, this is a YouTube video showing Uncharted at 4K 60 FPS and the resolution is just fantastic. You can see all sorts of details and when I was watching this, it feels very massive and with the extra details, it really feels like you are there in the game. So gaming experience, it's going to be really good. This TV supports Dolby Vision with MEMC motion smoothing and it also supports Dolby Audio with DTS surround. Let me uh, just turn up the volume slightly. Um, audio is loud, clear, and it fills the room, but the speakers are downward pointing, so I highly recommend you get a sound bar so that the audio can be projected towards you so that you can get the best audio quality. Because um, no matter how good audio is, when it's pointing downwards, it just doesn't uh, feel right. I don't watch TV shows from local TV stations, so I cannot say much about that. But you can scan for the channels using this TV. You can save the channels and there is the free antenna that's provided. This TV is priced very competitively at $699. The main selling point here is, for me, 4K resolution. The IPS panel has good colors and good viewing angles. The size, 55 inch, to me is like really huge. And of course, Android TV. Things I don't like, um, there is this limitation with IPS panel. So there will be IPS glow, that's to be expected. And the downwards facing uh, speakers. Audio quality is good, but when audio is pointing downward, it feels a bit weird. So if you have the budget, do um, get a sound bar that's going to improve your movie viewing or gaming experience significantly. So overall, um, for the price and value, I do feel like it's value for money, especially when you compare this to competing models. Um, the features set, I think it's quite good. Now, if you compare this to AMOLED, well, there's no comparison because AMOLED is better, but AMOLED is also significantly more expensive. So the performance of this TV is, as you have seen, you can decide whether or not this is worth your money. And if you guys have any questions, do let me know in the comment section below. I'll try my best to answer them. If not, see you guys again. I hope this video is helpful. Thanks for watching.